Hi everyone, it's me. So this week I finally wanted to do the opposite to a previous video and I just hadn't gotten around to it. So previously I did a video about British quirks that might be seen as rude in Canada, so now I want to do Canadian quirks that might be seen as rude in the UK. To be honest, both lists that I came up with were really difficult. Our countries are so similar and our cultures are very, very similar that it was genuinely difficult to try and come up with things that either country would see as rude or maybe weird or just like disrespectful a little bit, like just that kind of stuff. It was hard, okay? So these Canadian quirks that I think might be rude in the UK was a tough list, but I did come up with some stuff and I wanted to share it anyway. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, hold on. First up, I would say Canadians tend to be very approachable, very um, friendly, outgoing, talkative. You know, you go to some sort of event or you're standing in line for something. It's very common that you'll just start talking with somebody and you basically make friends with these people, these strangers, really quickly. In the UK, I think on a whole, British people are a bit more private, maybe standoffish. Obviously, Northerners will tell you that they're far more friendly than the Southerners, which in some ways is true, I guess. But overall, still, I think Canadians as a whole are more approachable. So what Canadians could do that might be seen as a bit weird or maybe a bit awkward or rude is to just talk too much. One scenario I could see, maybe you're sitting on a train, right? And uh, you're going into London and it's your first time going into London as a Canadian. And maybe you sit down by somebody and you try and maybe start a conversation this is usually not okay. A lot of British people like to just be by themselves. Don't talk to them. Certainly don't talk to people on trains. Oh my God, on the bus, no. Again, certain cities and different towns around the UK are different. I'm talking about on the whole. So before you get angry, take a breather. Overall, I think Canadians might be a bit too talkative for some British people. So maybe if, if you are visiting or you are gonna move here, just observe the British people for a little bit. Maybe don't jump into a conversation with somebody who is purposely trying not to make eye contact with you so you don't talk to them. In general, people just might find it a bit intrusive. And they just like, you know, British people like to have their space. I've mentioned this a couple times and I will say it again until I die. Do not mess up a queue. Do not cut a queue. Do not disturb a queue. Do not upset the natural order of life by wrecking a queue. Canadians love a queue as well. I mean, we call them lines. You line up. We naturally line up for anything. Sometimes there's not even anything on the other end. People are just in a line, so you just join the line. But there is a certain way that British people are just all about that queue. So if you are a Canadian coming over to the UK, please respect the queues. <laughs> please. Lord help you. Another thing that Canadians might do that, that's a bit offensive or annoying is talking about London too much. A lot of people, I mean in any country, when you travel, you tend to go to the big city. You tend to go to Paris, Rome, Barcelona, Toronto, London, right? We all do it. We pick the big city and we go. I've done it. The first two times I came to England, I specifically came just to London. But there is this feeling. If you are a Londoner, you tend to love London. It's special to you. If you are not a Londoner, you don't like London. So one of the things that can be annoying to British people is having foreigners come here and just be like, London's so great. I love London. I London is, is England. London is British. London is the UK. When in actuality, London is one of a kind. You will not find any other city like London in the UK. So it's really annoying when people think that A, all of England is like London or all of the UK is like London because it really isn't. But of course, as a vacationer, you won't necessarily know that. So just be aware, as a Canadian coming over to the UK, London is an incredible city. You have to have to go. Every time I go to London, I learn something new, I see something new, I eat something new, it's fantastic. But maybe when you're talking to British people, don't 
constantly talk about London because uh, non-Londoners don't like it. Another thing that Canadians might do over here in the UK that would be annoying or rude is not fully understanding the difference between the countries, Great Britain, and the United Kingdom. And let me tell you, I don't blame you for not understanding. It's not like necessarily something that we focus on in school, so it can be very confusing and sort of muddy in your mind if you're not really sure, okay, what's Great Britain, what's the United Kingdom, what's British, what's the UK, what's just a country. And if you use those terms um, intermit not inter what's the word I'm thinking of interchangeably, I guess that can offend some people over here. Rightfully so in some way, but also it is confusing and some of us we just don't know, you know. So a really brief explanation. Let's start at the base. So I live in England, which which is its own country. I live in England. England is part of Great Britain, which is England. Wales and Scotland, all three separate countries, but they all touch each other, basically. That's how I remember. They're all touching. And then Great Britain um, expands outward into the United Kingdom, which is England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So the United Kingdom consists of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Does that make sense? So that's how I remember it. Great Britain is the ones touching and then United Kingdom is all of those plus Northern Ireland which is kind of like off to the side and some people forget it's there I'm so sorry we we know you exist you're there you're part of the UK the United Kingdom obviously there are historical um, significance to what you refer to yourself some people only want to be called English and they take offense if you call them British but here's the thing they are British. They have a British passport. England doesn't have its pa doesn't have. There's no English passport. But some people, yeah, it's it's a, it's very tricky. And as a Canadian, it doesn't really make sense because we don't have the same history in that sense. So, for instance, if you're in Wales, people are Welsh, and they're also British. When you're in Scotland, people are Scottish, but they're also British. Some people don't want to be called British. Some people prefer to be called British rather than their particular country. It's very, very confusing. <laughs> but as a Canadian, the best thing that you can do when you come over to the UK, whether you're visiting or living, is just to understand the differences between what is Great Britain, what is the United Kingdom, and all the specific countries in between. Sometimes, even myself, when I do videos, I switch between saying England and um, British, like when I'm talking about certain things, because in my mind, English is also British. But some people find that really offensive. You just can't win. Sometimes when I talk about this kind of stuff um, here on the internet, the glory that is the internet, a lot of British people will say, well, that's like being called an American. Wouldn't that upset you? And I understand where you're going from. Um, I'm North American, sure. You can call me North American. That's totally fine. Um, I'm not American because I'm not from the United States of America. Canada and the United States of America um, are not the same thing as like England and Scotland. Canada and the US, we do not share a government, we do not have an open border. If you want to drive down into the US, you sure as hell better have a good passport and a good reason because otherwise you're not getting in. So it doesn't, it's not the same thing. Um, I am Canadian. You could call me North American sometimes. I call myself that when I'm including the US in some of the some of these comparisons, but Americans and Canadians, it's not the same as calling somebody Scottish or British, like it just, it doesn't work that way. Another thing that Canadians might do over in the UK that could be seen as rude, um, how do I say this? Both of our countries speak English, yes, we know that, but we do know that there are a lot of different variances in words, in slang in phrase structure, in all sorts of stuff that make our countries unique. But what can be really difficult is British people um, have a very sneaky way of speaking that Canadians might not know, just outright you don't know, or you don't really understand. So you can get yourself into weird situations. You might have seen 
um, might be seen as a bit rude or just like awkward. Let me explain. I found this really great chart online. So it's what the British say, what we think it means, but what the British actually mean. So sometimes British people have a very like indirect way of speaking that is, um, uses some sarcasm, uses like reverse psychology kind of stuff. It's really interesting. Not everybody does it obviously, but it does happen. And as a Canadian, I think Canadians are quite open, quite direct. And so when you come across this type of language, you might not really understand what's going on. So you're going to look a little bit weird. So say if a British person says, I hear what you say. To a Canadian, you might think, oh, okay, so they they hear what I'm saying, they agree, like they get what I'm where I'm coming from. But what the British person means, I disagree and do not want to discuss it further. Which is legitimately the opposite of what a Canadian might think. Another one that you might come across when a British person says, with the greatest respect, a Canadian might think, okay, they're listening to me, they're they're having this conversation, this back and forth, it's positive. They said, with great respect, it must be good. What the British mean, I think you are an idiot. Of course not everybody does this, but I have come across situations where a British person says something, but is actually meaning the opposite. What about when a British person says, could we consider some other options? Canadian might think, okay, they're not quite decided yet, they're unsure, could we consider some other options? You know, trying to just make a decision. What the British person actually means is, I don't like your idea. Could we consider some other options? Yeah, because I don't like your idea. Or maybe you're in a business setting and a British person says, I only have a few minor comments. To a Canadian, you think, okay, just a few comments, it can't be that bad. If you're in a business setting, you know, maybe they found a few typos or, or a few errors in a memo you're writing or something like that, they say, I only have a few minor comments that must be fine. What a British person actually means is please write this entirely, just rewrite it. So even though they're saying I only have a few minor comments means please rewrite, re that's really hard to say, please rewrite it. So as a Canadian, as a country, I think we're very upfront. I think we're very um, fairly direct. Um, pretty friendly, we kind of say what we mean for the most part. There is a part of British culture where British people might say something and on the face of it, it seems quite normal or nice or straightforward, but they actually mean something quite different. And that's just part of their type of language. There's a lot of sarcasm as well, which sometimes takes a while to get the hang of. But as a Canadian, you going into that situation and you're being very direct, um, it could be a bit awkward because you just don't understand. Another thing that Canadians might do that would be seen as rude is to be too loud, like too boisterous, just be too much. A fair amount of British people go by these stereotype on, on Americans, that Americans are loud, they're annoying, they're too brash, like it's just too much. And sometimes that stereotype filters back onto Canada as well. To be honest, I think both of them are wrong. I don't think Americans are loud. I think people see TV and movies and they think, oh, that's what America's like. Not really. Of course, there are some loud Americans and Canadians and Brits. We, we all got our loud people. But for the most part, British people don't like it if you are too much or too loud or just like, it's just stop. Of course, not everybody's the same. You go to maybe um, a lower end pub and people are shouting and it's quite rowdy and, and that sort of stuff, sure. But um, in just general society, you know, day to day society, British people don't want you coming in and being really loud and in your face and that kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind. If you're a really outgoing person, maybe just like tone it down just a little bit. It's the same as like talking to people on the train. You know, just give people space. Just be polite. I know you're polite Canadians. I, I know you are, but just bring it down a little bit. So those are some of the things that Canadians might do in the UK that could be seen as rude or just awkward or just weird, you know. It's actually really hard to find things that would genuinely upset 
either country. For the most part, we're so similar. We just are separated by an ocean. You may have noticed my um, artwork has changed. Does it look like anyone you know? On Patreon, I actually did a video of me painting a self-portrait. That one, actually. Can you tell that it's me? But yeah, if you want to watch videos like that, you can head over to my Patreon. This is a shameless plug. I'm plugging my own stuff. Here we go. I post extra videos once a week. So I post these YouTube videos, but then I also do a private Patreon video, that being one of them. Oh, I also did a drunk Patreon painting video of which I created this thing, which I won't explain what it is. The story is too long. But if you want to watch content like that, that's on Patreon. Um, and help, you know, help a girl out. You know what I'm saying? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, bye!